Hello everyone and welcome to the fourth part of this 12th MOOC dedicated to the production of sustainable biofuels. In the third part, we talked about transesterification to produce biodiesel. Let's now have a look at the second main option for producing biofuels, namely EFA or HVO. For this alternate pathway, we will use hydrogen that will break the triglyceride, but will also remove all the oxygen. All this will be done on a catalyst, but this catalyst is very sensitive to impurities that we have already detailed earlier in this MOOC, especially metals and nitrogen. A pretreatment section is used to remove all kinds of contaminants that were described earlier in this MOOC. Depending on the feedstock that we will treat, we see that we will necessarily have to remove a good part of the phosphorus, metals, chlorine, but also nitrogen. The values that you can see here in orange are the maximum acceptable values at the entrance of the hydro treatment unit. They are typical values, but may vary depending on the design of the downstream unit. But by the way, how to remove these contaminants? Phosphorus is present partly in the form of phospholipids. They can develop a crust at the top of the hydro treatment reactor and ultimately plug the reactor. This is why its content is typically limited to 5 ppm. The other metals will tend to poison the hydro treatment catalysts, and their value is typically limited to 10 ppm. Chlorine should be removed down to a typical value of 50 ppm to avoid corrosion problems. And finally, nitrogen must be limited for the reasons that we will see a little bit later. So, how to remove these contaminants? First of all, in the biorefinery, we receive several types of feedstocks animal fats, vegetable oils, used cooking oils, etc. We can receive all these feedstocks by truck, by train, or by barge. You can see here the associated quantities. Depending on their tendency to solidify, these oils are stored at ambient temperature or higher, I mean up to 50 or 60 degrees C. Indeed, the palm oil is typically stored at 50 degrees C, like used cooking oil and animal fats. All the vegetable oils, on the other end, are stored at ambient temperature. These feedstocks are then mixed together and enter the pretreatment unit to remove their contaminants. Well, that's it for today. Do not hesitate to subscribe to my YouTube channel and answer the five questions of the quiz. The link is available in the description of the video. See you very soon. Bye-bye!